Sleep is essential for a person's health and well-being, according to the National Sleep Foundation. Although a lot of us tend to suffer from lack of sleep, sleep is a vital part of our healthy lifestyle. Your heart, your mind, your weight would definitely benefit from a good night's sleep. Let's face it, our mind is surprisingly busy while we are awake. Well, it's equally busy while we sleep too. During sleep, we strengthen memories. We practice skills we've learned while we're awake. This process is called consolidation. Having a good night's sleep can sharpen your attention span so you can think more wisely and make better choices. Sleep also empowers someone from stress, anxiety, and depression. People have been known to get more emotional stable. With good sleep, even better, control their blood pressure. Have you ever had a rough day or argued with a partner or a friend and did not let it go before going to bed? Did you have a rough night's sleep and tossed and turned, thinking if it could only start the conversation over? How different could it end? Well, you're not alone. As many people realize how difficult it is to handle conflict, especially when it's late at night after an exhausting day. There have been several times in my life where I personally have not negotiated through a late night conflict in a good way. Therefore, leaving me to go to bed angry, leaving me to feel effects of the unresolved anger the next day. Here are some of the negative consequences of going to bed still angry. Bricks are added to the wall that keep you from communicating with the person you're upset with. You may argue more and try and avoid each other instead of speaking to one another then permanently into a, another bedroom, and then, well, you get the picture. Unresolved conflict night after night creates a relational wall that becomes increasingly tough to penetrate. The continual cycle of ending your day angry can also create a feeling of hopelessness in your relationship with the other person. A good night's sleep can create a, a sense of a new hope the next morning, but again, if you're going to bed angry, defeats the hope. Everyone needs to feel the triumph of overcoming conflict and starting fresh from time to time. But when the next day starts with hard feelings from the night before, the fresh start is delayed and sometimes lost completely. Anger not only harms emotionally, but can also harm you physically. Studies have shown that quality of sleep affects overall health. Now, I'm not suggesting that you can always resolve everything before going to bed. But that does not mean you must go to bed angry. You can just agree on one thing, that you'll talk about it and work it out tomorrow when you're fresh and ready to start a new day. Here's an engaging exercise to help you potentially have a better night's sleep and learn how to identify emotions. First, I want you to go to a quiet room in your house where no one will bother you. If you have the opportunity, maybe put soft music on and help you through this exercise. With the soft music on tune in that place, in your body, where do you feel emotional sensations, such as anger, feel, sadness, or any discomfort? This is your inner place of feeling. Wait and listen wherever you can sense in your place of feelings. Do not analyze or judge. Become just an observer. Now I want you to truly look at the cause of each emotion that you feel. Try and think back. What were you doing? Or what were you thinking? Or what was happening when you first felt that emotion? When looking at the cause of the emotion, try and remember that this is often a clue to what emotion you're experiencing. If your friend told you you could not make it for your planned trip that was already paid for, maybe you felt disappointed. If you were turned down for a job, you might feel sad. At times, people can't remember anything that happened. If this is the case, then try and think about what you were doing, who you were talking with, what you were talking about, etc. Anything that can help you identify the first, first felt emotion that you're feeling. Try and remember as many details of this emotion as you can. Learning to identify emotion you felt will often bring back memory of what triggered the emotion. If you aren't sure when you first felt the emotion, go back to when you knew you weren't not feeling it. Were you feeling this 
emotion at breakfast? Or did you feel it while you were at work? Now, step by step, look at what you did, what you heard, and what you thought since the last time you knew you were not feeling the emotion. Remember to consider events that would likely create emotion in others, even if you don't think it did for you. Once you identify the emotion, try to see why you felt this negative emotion, as we always seem to play a role in it. For example, if I'm feeling disappointed, why or what happened to me to feel that way? Why did I play a role in this to feel angry? We need to remember our emotions. We are the only one that can feel them. Others cannot feel them or they cannot make us feel them.